Look at this guy. Do you think he's looking cool? Well, if you do, actually, why though? Without the fume, he might as well also look cool. He has the acting chops. But the smoking certainly helps. You all know smoking in movies can make a character cool. But there is actually more than meets the eye. Directors are using it as a subtle tool for storytelling and accentuation of characters. But if so, why does it comparatively feel absent recently? May it be gone with the wind? Or did it never really vanish into thin air? Let me share some wisdom with you about... Spoken! As an avid non-smoker without the intention to ever light up, I won't convince anyone to start smoking, stay with the cigarette, nor bring back urges to revive old habits. So if you think you can't handle the smoke screen, this won't make it for you. Smoke. But if you do, or you don't care, or you're already deep into the fume, carry on. It's like I picked the wrong week to quit smoking. In 2009, James Cameron's avatar got a little shitstorm, because Sigourney Weaver was smoking in the film. You remember, right? Yeah, me neither. What's the big deal anyway? A side character is shown smoking, not even excessively, but really mundane, as it would be in real life. Colin Farrell fought to have a cigarette in The Pattinson Man, as it is attributed to his character the Penguin, but no cigar. No one better than I before, cause it was considered normal, so to understand how we did end up here, we have to go back a little bit. In 1934, the old days of Hollywood right around when tobacco companies were one of the main sponsors of movie studios, has the Hays Code been implemented into the Dream Factory. Everything God prohibited mustn't be depicted in movies. Nudity, profanity, murder, drugs, homosexuality, yada yada yada. You get the point. Interestingly, cigarettes were conspicuously absent from the Hays Code restrictions. This created an avenue for filmmakers to use smoking as a subtle and symbolic stand-in for sexual activity. Attention was heavily brought to the mouth and lips, portraying them with sexual undertones. Smoking was ubiquitous in movies, particularly in film noir, which created the trope of the hard-boiled detective who always smokes, like Bogart for example. A significant increase in cigarette consumption in the 40s was noticeable and not only actors were advertising for certain cigarette brands. There seemed to be no concern to show smoking in cartoons. Especially Disney has not the squeaky clean image they like to retcon nowadays. They can try to alter the history, but we won't forget. Naturally, smoking was not only reserved for men and cartoon characters. In the early to mid 20th century, smoking was often associated with sophistication, glamour and rebellion. Many leading ladies in Hollywood films were depicted elegantly smoking, contributing to their image of independence and modernity. And along the ever-smoking detective, the femme fatale archetype found her way onto the screen. In film noir and other genres, smoking became a symbol of the femme fatale. A mysterious and alluring woman with a dangerous edge. Smoking was used to enhance the enigmatic and seductive qualities of such characters. If a girl smoked, she was coded as not being a virgin. And moreover, having the experience to turn somebody's head. As societal norms shifted during the 60s and 70s, depictions of women smoking in films began to reflect changing perceptions of gender roles and expressions of independence. Female characters smoking became a visual cue for rebellion and non-conformity. But not exclusively, of course, as James Dean has been accompanied by a butt in Rebel Without a Cause long before. Furthermore, you could see people smoking in war movies or western, as it was not only common at the times they were presenting, but also during the shooting of the picture. As scientific research increasingly linked smoking to serious health risks, public awareness about the dangers of tobacco use grew, and the decline began from the late 1970s onwards. This shift in perception led to changes in how smoking was portrayed in various forms of media. Without a second thought, characters have been portrayed casually smoking in movies before, but now there arguably has been more thought put into it. Because of a surge in tobacco use in the 90s, there were increasing regulations and restrictions on tobacco advertising and smoking in public spaces. These changes also influenced the portrayal of smoking in movies. In the early 21st century, 
the big movie studios updated their company policies with a greater emphasis on responsible depictions or, in some cases, avoiding smoking altogether. In 2015, Disney stated they extend the ban of smoking for Marvel, Lucasfilm and Pixar productions. They won't depict smoking in G, PG or PG-13 rated movies, only if it's shown in a negative light or if it's about a historical person who may have smoked in their life. So the chain-smoking sisters Patty and Selma from The Simpsons have quit smoking a few years ago, and now one can only assume why. Got a cigarette? Not since we moved to Disney. Don't expect Deadpool smoking in his upcoming third entry, or even Wolverine with a cigar. Violence, yes. Smoking, no go. It may be the inverted Haze Code movie, but we will see. Emma Stone reported how difficult it was to play Cruella de Vil without being allowed to smoke. Only Netflix and other streaming services were a safe haven, but after a backlash for showing too much smoking in Stranger Things, they also changed their minds a bit in 2019 for content aimed at a younger audience. Smoking was used as a method for censoring, but now it is like a guest who outstayed his welcome. That's by no means a bad thing, as we all know how badly it affects health and the youth may be easier influenced. Or you may think, what's all the fuss about? The smoking is as present as ever, continuing to be portrayed in Peaky Blinders, Mad Men, Breaking Bad, etc. You're right. But these are shows. Another point for TV shows getting more cinematic and being reliable for mature stories. Don't assume to see fuming in blockbuster movies nowadays. Smoking seems to have been shifted to TV, R-rated pictures or period pieces. Filmmakers never stopped using smoking in creative ways, still to this day. But maybe it helps to have an established name to depict the haze on screen. Scorsese, Tarantino, Fincher show it whenever they feel like it. Example given. If you pay attention to every time Leo wants to light up in Shutter Island, Scorsese is tipping off what's going on in the movie, before it plays out in the end. Anyway, smoking serves as a powerful visual element in filmmaking, offering a versatile tool to convey various aspects of a character's personality, relationships with others, and contribute to the overall storytelling. The act of inhaling and exhaling creates a visible breath for actors, allowing them to play with their breath, making it tangible through the haze. It's aiding actors to play. De Niro doesn't need the cigarette here, but it's enhancing his ability to express emotions effectively. While not a requirement, a cigarette becomes a nuanced tool with a myriad of possibilities. For example, it can be employed to accentuate a character illustrate desire, attraction or intimacy. In general as a stand-in for sex. Or the famous post coital cigarette. You don't need to see what's happened before to know they got physical. Create an atmosphere in settings like a gathering of people buzzing their heads so much till the smoke. Or the other way, to establish a seedy honky-tonk with a suspicious crowd. Another well-known trope, the last cigarette before dying. Or to remember in war times, to never light up a cigarette at night. Use it as a prop for comedic effect. Similarly, smoking is often used to depict stress, the need for relaxation, freedom, rebellion, disease, hostility, the dangerous allure of the femme fatale is effectively accentuated through smoking. We can picture the inner seething of a character who is right before blow up. Sometimes the exhale through the nose resembles a drag and the danger we associate with it. Even when seemingly nothing is happening, there is movement in the frame. Despite never smoking in my life, I can't help myself and admire shots like these, especially when they look as aesthetically pleasing as here. And never underestimate the cool factor. But if we are honest, have you ever thought someone looks cool smoking in real life? Smoke. That's the power of cinema. It has the ability to make anyone appear cool through thoughtful staging. The relationships between characters can be conveyed nicely through their smoking. Take this scene from Die Hard. John offers Hans a cigarette. He 
He hesitates but takes it, to earn his trust. Right before Hans thinks he has the upper hand and can unveil himself, he's grinding the cigarette under his heel, signaling there is no need for John's trust anymore. On the same page of trust is a scene from Face Off. Travolta wants to earn the trust of the daughter by grabbing her pack and lighting a cigarette, signifying she should trust him. Or just simply underline a relationship by showing two friends sharing a smoke. A cigarette can also convey a character's background, suggesting a blue-collar upbringing. I'm out of here, man. Furthermore, it adds a touch of relatability and realism, making the character more authentic to the audience. Gunslingers, cops and soldiers have been repeatedly portrayed smoking to emphasize their greediness. But of course, this goal can be achieved by different types as well. But what about the other forms of smoking, you might ask? No worries, I gotcha. The power look. Back in the day, it was the go-to look to display wealth and success. Additionally, it became the manliest form of smoking. Why? Because you look badass. And if we consider it as a phallic symbol, the claim is, mine is bigger. On top of that, it can look dominant or aggressive, because bearing the teeth comes naturally with it, and it has a psychological effect on us. We should beware from someone showing us teeth. There's a difference between a smile and this. One is pleasant, the other may be unnerving. And some people own the look. Could you imagine Groucho Marx without his signature cigar? The educated look. A pipe needs to be prepared for smoking. It is for the wise and civilized, so you know you're dealing with a man of culture. Showing how smart a character seemingly may be. Guess what Sherlock Holmes is portrayed with in his classical renditions. In Inglorious Bastards, the French farmer thinks he's going to outsmart Landa. But then Landa reveals his ridiculously bigger pipe, saying he's knowing more and won't be fooled. Notice how the farmer reacts as Lander reveals his pipe. He lowers his pipe and is admitting defeat. The high society look. A cigarette holder or quellosire is usually reserved for elegant, graceful, glamorous and socially higher ranking people. But sometimes this can be perverted of course, as it helps Raoul Duke to show his non-conformity and his excessive nature. Furthermore, it's signaling assertiveness and control. Notice what Django smokes throughout the movie and what Candy smokes with. In the end Django has gained control and we see him smoking with the cigarette holder. High chance it's even Candy's. Smoking in movies whether for its aesthetics or as a way to tell the story remains a significant part of films. It makes a lasting impact on the storytelling language of cinema. Let's get this straight. Smoking never went away. It has always been there and will continue for many years to come in some form or another. And no, I didn't forget the e-cigarette, but I think it's too early to say a lot about it, as it hasn't been used much yet. Maybe it's not as cool looking, who knows. These are not the definitive meanings behind every scene smoking, so feel free to share your thoughts on the symbolism of your favorite puffing character or scenes containing the fume. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Are you smoking yet?